All right. In this video, I want to talk about walking by faith and how Jesus gave us the example of walking by faith and how Jesus actually rebukes works. This is this is interesting stuff here. In this passage right here, Jesus actually rebukes the curse given to Adam where he would have to till the ground by the sweat of his brow to bring forth fruit and vegetables for him to eat to survive. He rebukes that right here. And that's what I'm going to get into. Matthew chapter 6, verse 25. Therefore I say unto you, take no thought for your life, what ye shall eat or what ye shall drink, nor yet for your body, what ye shall put on, is not the life more than meat and the body than raiment. Behold, <coughs> here's the big rebuke. The fowls of the air, for they sow not, neither do they reap, nor gather into barns, yet your heavenly Father feedeth them. Right there is the rebuke against the curse put on Adam. It's showing Jesus is lifting the curse, and he's telling us to have faith. He's, he says, look at the birds. Do you see them tilling the ground? Uh, getting all the stones out of there, pulling up the weeds, planting the seeds, watering, and waiting for the increase. And then when they get the increase, they're, they're worried about not having food in the future, so they, they, either they ration it and then they store the rest in the barns. No, they don't do that. But your Heavenly Father feeds them as He feeds all the other animals. <coughs> and He says, Are ye not much better than they? Which of you, by taking thought, can add one cubit unto his stature? And why take ye thought of for raiment? Consider the lilies of the field, how they grow. They toil not, neither do they spin. And yet I say unto you, that even Solomon in all his glory was not arrayed like one of these. Wherefore, if God so clothed the grass of the field, which today is, and tomorrow is cast into the oven, shall he not much more clothe you, O ye of little faith? Therefore take no thought, saying, What shall we eat, or what shall we drink, or wherewithal shall we be clothed? For after all these things do the Gentiles seek. For your heavenly Father knoweth that ye need all these things. But seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things will be added unto you. So that's another unction of faith here to seek the kingdom of God and his righteousness and then all of these things will be given to you your life what you'll eat what you drink your clothes you'll be taken care of because you'll be in the kingdom of God and you'll have his righteousness Philippians chapter 3 verse 9 and be found in him, not having mine own righteousness, which is of the law, but that which is through the faith of Christ, the righteousness which is of God by faith. I've been asking people, what is the point of Jesus dying on the cross and raising from the dead? And you know what's funny? Is nobody answers it. I've been talking to these Catholics, these Calvinists, these Seventh-day Adventists, and I plainly ask them, what was the point of Jesus dying and raising from the dead? And it's just crickets. For the most part, one person who's a Seventh-day Adventist tried to say that, well, you sinned, so Jesus died to give you a second chance so that you can not sin. And if you sin again, you know, you're in the same boat. <coughs> and I say, okay, well, if that's the case, we're all doomed. Because we all sinned before we came to Jesus. We accept Jesus and we've all sinned again. So then we're doomed. But that's not why Jesus died. Jesus died to join you to himself, 
so that when he's being nailed to the cross, he's marrying himself to you so that we are one flesh. And that when he's taking the death on the cross, he's taking it for you so that when he's dying in the flesh, you die in the flesh. So God considers you dead. That's why it says here, made conformable unto his death. They might attain unto the resurrection of the dead. And then when Jesus rises from the grave, he justifies us because he cleansed us in his blood and he gives us his righteousness, which is perfect and holy. There's no blemish in it. It's perfect love for God, love for our fellow man, love for everything. <coughs> That's why Jesus died. To forgive us of our sins, to save our souls, to be joined with him. Yet, these three groups that I'm talking about, the Catholics, the Calvinists, and the Seventh-day Adventists, don't seem to realize that. Sometimes they, they tell me, don't focus on me, focus on Jesus. Because I say, hey, haven't you sinned? You, you condemn me because I sinned. But you've sinned. Why do you get forgiven and I don't? And they don't have an answer for that. And that's when they would tell me, focus on Jesus, not me. And yet they don't focus on Jesus. They focus on themselves. They focus on themselves keeping the law, being obedient to God, and doing good works. And they think that this earns them salvation, that it, this proves that they're saved, and it earns their keeping of their salvation. Because some of them, like the Catholics, think they need to do these things to get salvation. Uh, a lot of the Lordship Salvationists, that are, a lot of Cal uh, Calvinists, they believe they need to do this to prove they are saved. And the Seventh-day Adventists, they say you got to do these things to keep the salvation that Jesus gave you. All of them are wrong. Jesus rebukes the works. And I've gotten into that into other videos, but I wanted to bring this stuff up to show more of grace without Paul. Even though I'm using Paul here, I wanted to just add a little bit of how Jesus is showing it along with it. And also bring in some Old Testament here. Where it's talking about the future. It says, Behold, his soul which is lifted up is not upright in him, but the just shall live by faith. This is something that Paul quotes. And some of these people, mainly the Seventh-day Adventists, were trying to say that Paul is not biblical. Yet Paul gave praise to the Berians for testing what he said to the scriptures. And this fellow kept telling me to you know, search the scriptures to get in the scriptures. If we didn't have the letters of Paul, we just had the scriptures. Yet Paul is shining light on the scriptures just as the prophets shine light on the Torah. So... Uh, there's not anything that contradicts here. He's bringing up the scriptures. Paul was taught from one of the top teachers of the law. I can't say his name correctly because I don't remember it quite well. It's Gamiel, Gramiel, something along those lines. He was a great teacher of the law and would teach the scriptures and taught Paul. So Paul know, knew the whole Old Testament. And he probably had a lot of it memorized because that was part of what they did. So when Jesus shined light on it, he could see it all and put it all together because he had it all there within him. As Jesus said that he's going to give the Holy Spirit because it was not yet given because he hasn't been glorified. And when the Holy Spirit comes, it's going to teach them things that they're not ready to hear yet. And that's what was given to Paul. He wasn't ready to hear it, but he was given the Spirit. And then all the things that he memorized in the word were brought forth. And he could see it. Uh, so anyway, we've got to walk by faith, not by sight. Follow Jesus. Yoke up with him. Because his yoke is easy and his burden is light. And he will give rest onto your souls. You'll be able to enter into the true Sabbath, which is resting from your works of trying to save yourself from trying to prove you're saved and trying to keep your salvation. Trust in Jesus. Jesus is the focal point. 
Like they want to keep telling me, focus on Jesus. I am focused on Jesus. I'm focused on what he did for me and that he saved me. And I love him for it. I love him because he loved me. I wouldn't have loved him if he never loved me. Because I am trash. No doubt about it. Just like you. <clears throat> and I think the problem with a lot of these people is the lack of humility. Is really what it comes down to. So humble yourselves. Like little children. But anyway. Thanks for watching and take care.